Hello, Les from Retired and Living the Dream. And today's video is going to be about why I retired at 50. Was I clever? Did I make the right strategic moves? Did I make enough income so I could retire at 50? No, none of that. Just luck. Right place, right time, right job. I joined the fire service in the UK when I was 19 years old. And the interviewing officer told me that I could retire at the age of 50. Now at 50 years old, for, to a 19 year old, oh that's miles away, didn't even think about it, didn't even give it a second thought. But now I've gone past retirement, it was one of the best moves I've ever done. I love the job being a firefighter, and after 30 years, I took the opportunity and grasped it by the hand and retired at 50. Why? Because I could. I'm very, very lucky, I'm very, very fortunate of choosing the right job at the right time with the right conditions and I love every second of it. So retiring at the age of 50, that'll never happen nowadays because of everything's just changing in the world and the opportunity to retire at 50, if you've made enough money in your working career, then perhaps you can retire at 50. But for those people in a normal job, it looks like 65 to 68 years old before you can retire. So, there's nothing special about me. There's, I made my plans when I was 42 year old about certainly and 100% retiring at the age of 50 because I could. And I'd gone through a massive divorce at the age of 42. I lost everything that I'd, I'd worked for. And was it disappointed? Of course it was. I'd worked all them years to provide a really good future for my wife, myself and my kids only to lose everything through divorce at the age of 42. Say la vie, that's what happened, move on and look at your future. And I was fortunate enough to look at the bigger picture and I've always done that all of my life. Don't dwell on things that have happened and bad in the past, always look forward and see what else you can do. So another reason why I decided to retire at 50 year old, if somebody shows you a better way of living, a better lifestyle, would you not take it? One of my friends in the UK persuaded me to come on a holiday to Thailand. And at first I said, no, no, I don't want to go. I was going through a divorce. Everything was depressive. Everything was, was feeling bad. There was no light at the end of the tunnel. I was in a, a deep, dark place, as anybody is going through a divorce. So anyway, he convinced me to go to Thailand. And I've got to say, it's that one holiday the first time I ever been to Thailand changed my views on life. The things that that two week holiday taught me put me in a change in the frame of mind for the rest of my life. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you the story of why this one particular holiday changed the view of my life forever. And when I was on my two week holiday, all my troubles just faded away because of the sheer beauty of this place, the tropical, island, beautiful warm seas, beautiful beaches, nice friendly people. What, what wasn't there not to like about it? I looked at places to live, how cheap it was to live there. I talked to other people who were already retired and living there and it was all positive. It really, really was all positive. And then I met one girl and I spent two or three days with this girl and she showed me where she lived. And my friend said, Les, don't go there, don't go there, you'll hate it. And she showed me where she lived. I said, no, I said to my friend, no, I want to go and see, I want to go and see how these people live compared to our Western lifestyle. So I went to where she was living and all I can describe it is a garage. And there was eight other garages all next to each other. And she had a room with two beds in and the shower was a 45 gallon drum with water in it and you just showered yourself with a, a bowl of water. Very, 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 very basic. Just, you'd wonder how people could live like that, but this was her home while she was working in Koh Samui. And they overlooked a lake where these garages were. And then the only guy that lived amongst all of these girls that lived in these little garages he was one of the top chefs in one of the hotels and he came back at six o'clock just as the sun was going down and he cooked a meal for everybody, including me. 
English wasn't very well spoken by this guy, but we sort of got on with each other. And then he's got his guitar out. And then all of these people, as the sun was going down, we were eating the food. And I'm thinking, that was my light bulb moment. I'd never felt so happy and content with nothing surrounding me. Just genuine, honest people living the best life that they can under the circumstances that they have with virtually nothing. And I'm thinking of all of the money that I had and earned, and I thought I had it all, but in reality I had nothing because these people with nothing seemed to be more happy than me when I had everything. So that's the feeling that changed my life, that you don't need to have all your possessions, all your, your toys to be able to be happy. You can be happy if you're happy with yourself. And that was the biggest lesson. Be happy with what you have and where you are. Irrespective of whether you live in a little shack somewhere or whether you live in a big mansion. Don't be envious about the people wealthier than you because they may be more richer than you, but happiness wise, they may not be as happy as you. I've always had a positive attitude and following that holiday to Thailand, it just changed my views on life totally. So when I came back to England, I had a new mindset. Living in Thailand was sort of the ultimate goal if everything else went wrong. Thailand, if you like, was my backstop. So anyway, the eight years went by from getting in a, a good pasting with my divorce and then going through bankruptcy, which then put me in the, in the field of I have nothing. So I worked my way up again through the eight years of working, two years of bankruptcy, which was very, very hard. So following my bankruptcy, I started working again. And within five years before retirement, I'd saved a little bit of money up as well. And I knew I was going to retire at the age of 50. Now, many people said, oh, no, you, you know, you're still young at 50 years old. You know, you can you retire at 60, get some more money behind you. I knew I was going to get a stable pension every single month for the rest of my life. So I knew that was my default income. And I'm very, very lucky and I'm very, very grateful to the people who pay me my salary every month by working at a job that offered that. Not everybody is so lucky to do that. I was 19 year old, right place, right time, right job. So I've been retired at 50 years old. I was still a young guy. So I traveled the world for two years and I went around Europe. I loved every second of my retirement. I did many, many, many things because I could, because I was young enough to be able to enjoy it. Now I'm 62 year old. I've got a little bit of arthritis. Everything aches in the morning. So could I have done all the things at 62 or even 65 now, which is the normal people that retire? 15 years older, I fear not. So when you get older, for sure, things start hurting. You can't do the same things at 65 that you could do at 50 years old. So my feeling is, if you get to retire early, grasp it with both hands, take wherever you can get. You don't need a lot in life to be able to live a happy retirement. Downsize, sell your stuff, move to a smaller apartment. Retirement doesn't last a long time. You've worked longer than you're gonna retire. So grasp every opportunity that you can. Retirement's very, very important. Live a happy life. So watch my other videos with regard to being retired. Retired and living the dream, yes I am. I love every second of being retired, so thanks for watching.